A very good morning to one and all. I, Shita Pujari from FYBB, welcome you all for the session titled Footscape and Escape from Metaverse. Organized by the BBA Financial Economics, Margao Goa, in association with Internal Quality Assurance Cell. Before we begin, I request all the participants to put off their mic and camera. Question and answer round will be held at the end of the session. Participants may put their questions in the chat box. Metaverse is a virtual environment where you can be present with people in digital spaces. It is a market of 3D virtual worlds focused on social connection. In this today's virtual world, when you're on internet, talking to your friends, we are mostly interacting in a very superficial level. We all need a break from this virtual world. In order to have a healthy discussion, let's talk about foodscape. Foodscape is a combination of two words. Food and landscape. It is to have a landscape that consists of food. To speak more on the topic, today we have amongst us Ms. Lisa Finario. I now request Gulshan Sheikh from TYBBA to introduce the speaker for the session. Sorry for the inconvenience. I think uh, Gulshan had uh, no connectivity, so there was a lag. Uh, so I'll introduce the resource person. Uh, welcome, Lisa, for this uh, session. Okay, so for today's session, we have uh, Ms. Lisa Pinero. She has completed her BSc Agriculture at Don Bosco College of Agriculture. Ms. Lisa is an agriculture consultant and agri trainer at Proof of Hard Work Vasco. She helps in setting up kitchen gardens for urban developers, does farm consultation on planting, pest and disease management, landscaping, and garden maintenance. She conducts webinars and workshops on gardening plant care, mushroom cultivation, beekeeping, and other topics for farmers, schools, colleges, and other enthusiasts. She was recently featured and interviewed on Goa 365, Story Behind the Story. Recently, she was felicitated as Inspiring Women in Agriculture by JCI. Presenting to you, Ms. Lisa Nehru. Thank you, ma'am Ashwini, for the introduction. Uh, good morning, uh, the principal of Dhamma College of Commerce and Economics, and my dear students. So today I'll be discussing about a very familiar topic, which is metaverse, and how we can escape from metaverse by gardening. So begin with the session. I hope I'm audible to you all. Yes, yes, you're audible. Yes, you're audible. So is my screen, screen visible? Yes, yes. You can see your screen. Yeah. Again, so I'll be talking about scale and how we can escape from metaverse. So we might, all of us might have this Facebook app on our phones and Recently, Mark Zuckerberg has rebranded Facebook to Meta. So initially, we used to see Facebook as like when we, whenever you, you used to open the app, you used to see Facebook. And now when we open the app or when, whenever we open the website, we see Meta. So what is this Meta? So earlier in the early 2000s, Facebook was used only for texting and typing. Uh, we used to text to people across the world and socialize with each, with each other. Then it uh, made to photos. So people could upload photos and then connect with each other. And now it's changing to videos. And in about five to 10 years, our entire body will be engaged into virtual reality. We'll be using those virtual uh, reality headsets, wherein now use just a phone and a screen and use our fingers to tap and send messages or we talk to video calls, but later we'll be using our entire body and we'll be present in some other uh, world, which will be actually not real, not physically, but it will be actually virtually. So this is what Metaverse is going to be about. And uh, the main concept is to socialize with people from other parts of the world. Now we do it through video calls or by texting or by sharing photos. And we use avatars on Snapchat, or you might have also used avatars on uh, Facebook. But Metaverse, in Metaverse, we are also going to connect by 
to people by using 3D avatars. So we'll be having an avatars of our own self, either of our own imitating or depicting our entire self, or we will be having some uh, three-dimensional illustrative uh, avatars, like it's in the second picture. So you can see in the second picture, there's a classroom which is also created a virtual classroom, a teacher and a student talking to talking to each other in this uh, virtual world, which is a uh, yeah, metaverse. And in the first picture, you can see there's a real person, and on the side, that's a virtual person. So they are playing chess. So this can happen when you are from other part of the world, and you can still connect to the people who are abroad or who are far away from you. And what can be done? is you can work from one place and have meetings, have different offices and then conferences in one place to virtually. Then you can invite friends to play games and then hold parties now in future parties and gaming will be virtually. You won't have to, you don't have to go and travel far distant to meet your friends. You can be at your home and conduct and host parties. Mm -hmm. Also shopping can be done virtually. You can buy clothes online. Also, this is happening now. The shops which were clothing stores are getting shut down because of these e-commerce and online shopping. Also, now nobody had ever imagined that someday in life we are going teachers and students and education will be through phones, through screens. You'll be sitting at home and the teacher will be talking to you through a cell phone or a through a laptop. So this is already happening. So in uh, metaverse, we are going to have these avatars wherein you'll learn of how to study and all other educational uh, things. Also, art can be done virtually. So this is all what is going to happen in about five to 10 years. And this virtual reality will be part of our reality soon. But can we entirely run this kind of reality? Like in the first picture, you can see a couple, uh, you know, fascinating the virtual nature but can you really feel the moment where can you really compare the moment through real nature to a virtual nature no you cannot some things cannot be done virtually like for example food and health we need real food to eat yeah. madam the screen is not visible you can tap uh, yeah. pin on uh, pin on you can pin up in Maybe I have internet issue. It is visible. My other colleagues are able to see. Sorry. Okay. Continue, madam. Yeah. So in this picture, you can see, like I said, it's a virtual nature and a real nature. But the feeling of real nature is much more different than the virtual nature. And coming to food and health, we cannot we cannot get well virtually. If we are ever sick, we cannot get well virtually. We need to go to real hospitals. We need to have real treatments. And we need to eat real healthy food to get well and to boost our immune system and to lead. We cannot rely on virtual food or virtual health, which is going to happen in future. So now how do we get started? Now, you might be a commerce student, you might not have an agriculture background, or you might have never gone into the field, but I'll show I'll tell you some tricks and tips how to get started. Now, you don't have to have a very big field or a very big place to grow food. You can also grow food if you have a terrace. Like in this picture, you can see leafy vegetables, beans, and other creepers are grown on terrace in grow bags. You don't have to even have a piece of land to grow food. You can grow food in buckets. You can grow food in grow bags. You can grow food in pots and other containers. Also, for those who do not have terraces or who live in small apartments and have balcony, you can also grow food. food. So if you have a balcony which receives good amount of sunlight, you can, have, you can grow food in your balconies as well. Like in this picture, you can see there are tomatoes which are grown the picture on your, my right, you can see some leafy vegetables. So I'll be teaching you how to grow food in apartments, or in balconies, and on ground as well. Okay. So move to the next slide. And this is, if you have a piece of land or if you have a backyard and you're very lucky, you can grow a wide range of vegetables. And we'll see how it's grown. Starting, you need 
have you need to have place to grow for those who have a uh, ground you need to have soil now so good soil is when it is rich with organic matter it is rich with microorganisms now soil is for when there are too much of chemicals if there is paint in the soil if, the, if or if there is concrete you cannot use that soil for growing because it is toxic and when you have soil you can prepare raised beds like in the second picture so here you can prepare like how they prepare in the field you can prepare raised beds like these or you can prepare ridges to grow food using a pickaxe a, a rake or a spade and then you can if you have any leaves or in your orchard or in your garden you can collect some leaves dead leaves because dead leaves act as a mulch and eventually when you put it in the soil it becomes soft and porous and rich so dead leaves whatever is around your garden you can utilize and put it up on the raised bed before growing or after growing the vegetables so this is how uh, land is selected also you need to make sure for vegetables for food crops you need lot of sunshine if there is no sunshine you will not get good yield so it is important to choose a place which receives good amount of sunshine now for those who want to grow food in their apartments or who do not have place can grow food in pots and containers like here in the first picture i have used a paint bucket anything which is hollow and deep can be used as planter so first you need to drill holes at the base of the container now why holes when you put too much when you add water the excess water which is there needs to come out through the hole if there is too much of water in the pot then there are chances of rotting of the roots and root rotting of the roots and the vegetables won't grow well so it is important that every pot that you buy or every pot that you make at home need to have a hole at it then the next step is you have to put a, a layer of gravel or coconut husk you can cut uh, chunks of coconut husk and put it at the base of the pot now this will prevent leaching of soil through the holes so yeah, you have when you put gravel or coconut husk husk a uh, bit of chunk it will prevent of the soil and the third is preparing potting mix so when you grow in pot you need to make sure that your soil is soft enough if it is uh, too hard then your vegetable roots won't grow well so it is important that you have porous and very organic potting mix now how to prepare potting mix you have to take uh, two parts of soil in two parts of soil you can mix one part of cocoa pit and one part of compost if you do not have cocoa pit you can use rice husk or uh, powdered leaf you can mix it in the soil so that it becomes porous and soft and you have to mix it with compost And then you can fill it in your pots or grow there. Now potting uh, is done. Uh, next is uh, so I have quiz for the students. You know, ask you a question, and if you know the answer, you can raise your hands. And if you answer it correctly, I'll send you a uh, true quiz. Are you ready? Okay. So the quiz is the question is guess. the seeds from the uh, screen this is only for the students not faculty and the others who have joined i have put uh, these are very common uh, seeds which you will find in your kitchen you have to guess all four correctly is there anyone or you can type it in the chat box you can turn on your microphone and guess the seeds or you can type it in the chat box you have to guess also I think uh, Trisha Dimelo, Trisha Dimelo got uh, correct. 
the first one in the picture is a uh, fenugreek the second one is ladyfinger the third one is coriander and the fourth one is chili so these are seeds from your kitchen which you can use for planting now there are some seeds which cannot be sown directly which uh, there are some seeds which needs to be sown separately raised in seedlings at a nursery stage and then transplant because these seeds require more care because they are quite delicate now to raise seedlings you can either sow it in a pot like it's in the second picture you can sprinkle seeds uh and to sow it in the pot and once it gets 3 to 4 leaves you can transplant it or you can use egg trays or seed trays to sow seeds so in each cavity you can sow one seed and then once it gets 3 to 4 leaves you can transplant it in the main place or you can directly sow it on the ground in line sowing method like how it's in the third picture and then when it gets the leaves you can transplant it now every seed have different time for germination most of the time what happens as a beginner is when you sow the seed we expect it to germinate the next day itself and this is not the case every seed have different time like for example uh, in the first period you will see ready finger cucumber and bean usually take about 5 uh, to 6 days to germinate so when you sow ready finger seed so when you sow cucumber it should it you mostly expected it must germinate the next day itself and what happens you add so much of water thinking why it's not germinating and eventually you end up rotting the seeds by adding too much of water so this needs to be prevented the, these are lady fingers cucumbers and bees take about 5 days to 6 days of germination and these seeds can be sown directly they need not have to be raised into seedling you can directly sow them in your pot or in the ground and then you, after 5 to 6 days you will see the new leaves coming up now the second one is uh, brinjal chilies and tomatoes these seeds need to be raised as seedlings they cannot be sown directly on the ground because first of all they are very delicate secondly they take a long time to germinate like it's given here it takes about 7 to 10 days for brinjal seeds for chili seeds and for tomato seeds to germinate and when you sow the seed you need to raise seedlings and once it get 3 to 4 leaves as is this in this picture uh, the corner once it it is at this stage you can remove and plant it and the third one is coriander the coriander takes the longest time to germinate it takes about 14 days that's why many people feel that like why the coriander is not germinating is because of this it actually takes so much of so many days so after 14 days you will see a coriander germinating and coriander can be sown directly now seedling should be raised in a place which receives good amount of sunlight if you raise seedlings In, inside the hole where they share you will not get healthy seedlings it will be lanky so it is important that you sow seeds in the sunlight and keep the seedlings away or when you are sowing the seeds must receive a good amount of sunlight and transplanting should be done always in the early morning or late in the evening after 4 pm so that it does not get a uh, transplanting shock and it does not get dehydrated because of hot sun If you transplant during daytime, the seedlings or the plant will get uh, will get heated up and eventually they will die. So the best time to transplant is in the evening. And when you're removing seedlings from the trays, you need to make sure it should not disturb the roots. You can just press the scoop and uproot with the root itself, and then transplant. It. Now you, as a beginner, can grow some leafy vegetables. Like which germinate within two days. Like there is spinach, there is red amaranthus, then there is dill. So these are some leafy vegetables which are easy to grow and can be harvested within one month. You just have to sprinkle seeds in the pot or on the ground, and within two to three days you see them germinating. And also you can harvest these vegetables within one month. Now most most of the time, what happens is as a beginner, people just sow the seeds and plant 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 the plants too close. Now we must remember that every plant requires particular amount of space to grow. Whenever you sow a seed or whenever you transplant a seedling, it needs a particular amount of space. Like for example, chilies, tomatoes, uh, brinjals need to be planted at, at a distance of 30 to 30 centimeters apart. One tomato plant should be away. From About 30 centimeters to 40 centimeters away from the other tomato plant. If it is too close, like it's in the 
picture where I've marked as mistake. There are too many tomato seedlings plants in one pot. So what happens when there are too many plants planted closely or there are too many plants planted uh, together is that they compete for nutrients, they compete for sunlight, they compete for water, and they compete for space. And then you will not get fruit also. The, the plants will die. Only the fittest one will survive and the remaining plants will die. And when you grow, you want to grow these plants in pot, you have to make sure that you choose a pot size, which is 12 by 12 inches. And the plants must, must require sunlight for at least six to eight hours a day. So this is how it's done. And if you're going for leafy vegetables, you can go for rectangular pots, which are approximately six to eight inches deep. There are some other vegetables. Once you are once you are experienced with the leafy vegetables, you can try the other vegetables, which are beans. You can grow beans. You can grow lady fingers. You can grow root vegetables like radishes and all those. You just have to sow seeds directly in the ground, and after like five or six days, they germinate, and you within three months you get the harvest. For those who do not have space and have very little of sunshine, you can grow herbs at home. You can buy uh, seeds or you can buy saplings from the nurseries of basil. You can buy saplings of mint, rosemary, celery, and you can sow coriander seeds, which require less amount of sunlight. And, it, and you can grow them in your balcony or also you can keep them on your windowsill. So these are some herbs which you can grow at home. Also, the herbs require very, uh, very cool area and bright spot and minimal watering. So it is easy to grow herbs. And best thing is about herbs is it can be harvested at any time of their growth. So whenever you're making pestos or whenever you're making salads, you can just snip off the coriander leaves or you can just snip off the rosemary uh, sprig and then sprinkle it on your dishes. There are some vegetables which require support. For example, beans and cucumbers and gourds require support. So you can traditionally people in farms they get a power trellis which is called as mato in Konkani. Or you can if you do not have place, you can prepare in the second picture. You can see you can set up a net for creepers to climb up. This is a terrace garden wherein the person has put up a net for the climb up. Or you can put some sticks as a support for the bean creeper to grow. And if you're growing in pots, you can prepare these cages out of uh, iron rod for the iron wires. And you can put it in your pot so that the creeper gets the support to grow. So this is how trellises are made of vegetables. Now, this is a very common mistake which is made by the people. It is watering. Now, you must water always either early in the morning or in the evening. Because when you water in the afternoon, it, the temperature is so hot and the water does not reach to the plant and it evaporates. So it is advisable always to water early in the morning or in the evening. And when you water, the water should seep down as quickly as possible. It should not remain stagnant on top of the pot, like in the second picture. And when this happens, and when this happens, when water remains stagnant on top of the pot, there are chances of root rot and lot of soil bone fungal diseases. So you must make sure that you, you should avoid uh, letting water to remain on top. It must sit down as quickly as, as possible. Like how we need food, plant, plants need food as well. So for plant food is composed or there is compost, you can use goat mania, you can use cow dung, and there are different types of manures available. You can also prepare compost at home. Now, how to put compost? You must always put it in a circular pattern around the plant. It should be never close to the stem. It should be always away from the stem because that's where the feeding roots are. Feed, roots are not closer to the stem, they are away from the stem. And when you put away the compost or the manure away from the stem, the feeding root gets a chance to absorb the required uh, nutrients, and then that's how the plants grow well. Also, 
Liquid manure can be drenched in the soil or it can be sprayed on the leaves, like after 15 days. If you do not have liquid manure, you can use fish water from your kitchen or meat water or vegetable water as a manure for your plants and you can just drench the soil. Now, kitchen waste and garden waste can be also converted into compost at home. There are different ways of composting, there are different methods. Like in the first picture, for those who do not have place, they can bring mesh wire from the hardware stores, take it into like a cylinder and fill all the leaves and the kitchen waste into it. And eventually, after three, four months, it will get degraded and you can use this homemade compost for your plants. Also, you can, there's another method which is called as pit method. You can dig a pit in the ground and put some uh, vegetable scraps and leaves and cover it up with the soil. And after some months, you'll see uh, it's, getting, it's getting degraded and you'll get the compost. You can harvest the compost from the pit and use it for your plants. Also, there, there are some beneficial insects feeding on the compost. Like in this case, there are earthworms feeding and then there are soldier fly maggots. Now, the, the casting of these maggots or the casting of the earthworm is actually the compost. So, they film all these uh, waste, uh, kitchen waste, and the casting is used as compost. It gets converted into compost. Now, there are some innovations which you can do is uh, you can fill your kitchen waste in uh, drums like these in those barrels, and then it, since compost needs to be turned every 15 days, you can just turn the barrel. There's a handle for it, and then that's how it, it gets mixed. Also, composting can be done at home in buckets. So you can use old buckets or paint buckets and put your waste, and eventually it will get composted. So on top, you can put a card, or EM is an effective, effective microbial solution, which helps in faster decomposition. So when you when your bucket gets filled with kitchen waste on top, you can mix it. You can you can put some curd and then mix it, stir it after every 15 days. So that is how compost is made. So I got another quiz for you. Also only for the students. So name any uh, five vegetables which grow underground. You can either turn on your microphones or you can type it in the chat box. Any five vegetables which grow underground? Okay, Trisha answered it again, and there's another one. Uh, Kristen, uh, Trisha answered it. Carrots, onions, beetroots, potatoes, and radish. Absolutely correct. Then there's Kristen, uh, Kenneth, uh, carrots, radish, beetroot, potatoes, and onions. Both of you have answered it correctly. Well done. So you can just message me later after, at the end of the session, and I'll send your prizes. Now we are done with the vegetables. Now you see we can also grow fruit trees. If you have a lot of space, you can directly plant the saplings. But if you do not have uh, space, you can grow fruit, fruit trees in pot. And you how to grow pineapple. This time when you buy pineapple, from, uh, whether you remove the crown and remove the lower leaves. Like in this, this picture, the lower leaves of the pineapple is removed. And you can put it in a glass of water. Once it is in water, the the exposed portion, the white portion, which is there, it will start initiating the roots. And when it gets the roots, you can, after 15 days, you'll see the bigger roots. And when it gets the roots, you can directly transplant in a pot, a bucket, or bigger pot, preferably, because it's a big plant. And then after two years, you'll get pineapple. So this is how you can regrow pineapple crown. Then you can also grow oranges, you can also, sorry, uh, sweet lime, then lemons in pots. So for lemons, you need at least 24 by 24 inches deep pot, or you can grow for uh, 15 by 15 inches deep pot. And still, in, even in, it's in the pot, you can get the fruit. Also, mango graft, chiku graft, guavas can be grown in pots. 
you can either grow it in those blue barrels or you can grow it in uh, 24 by 24 inches pot or if you have a lot of space you can directly grow them in ground and papayas and bananas are very easy to grow uh, fruits you can just plant the saplings and after one year you will get the fruit papayas within 6 to 8 months will get the fruit so this is something which you can do as a beginner which does not need too much of scientific knowledge you can just sow the seeds you can just plant the uh, saplings manure it at the right time and you enjoy your fruit within some time and it is and it is also home grown you know it is organic and the fruits which you have in your garden which you eat from your garden will be much tastier than the ones which you buy from outside now as uh, vegetables and uh, these fruits are of is a food it is food also for some insects like in the first picture you can see it's a these are some uh, in sucking pests which transmit diseases in plants there's leaf curl in chilies you might have seen this curling of leaf in chili plants it is because of an insect called white fly on the lower picture you can see this white color insect which feeds on the leaf it sucks the cell sap from the leaf and then the leaf starts curling then there's also yellow wing mosaic virus it is a viral disease in plants then there are many bugs in okra you also see them on tulsi you also see them on hibiscus on sarsap and many other plants mini bugs are very common pests then there are aphids so these pests suck the cell sap and transmit diseases wherein the plants do not produce flowers or do not produce full fruits if it is severely infested and how you can control this is by spraying neem oil or you can uh, hang a yellow sticky trap or you can Uh, use botanical extracts there are viral disease controllers available in the market you can mix it in water and spray it on the leaves to control these insect pests then there are some other type of insects like there is bean beetle uh, which eats the leaves then there are different grasshoppers which uh, you know eats the leaves and there is hornworm there are different caterpillars in and in, when you see buy tomatoes or when you get brinjals or lady fingers you will see holes in the brinjals or holes in the tomatoes that is because of an insect insect called as fruit borers there are different types of fruit borers which feed on the fruits then then there are leaf miners spiral like pattern on the leaves so this is by an insect called leaf miners and there are slugs and snails which are chomping on the leaves so these uh, insects can be prevented by spraying microbials like bevaria basiana these are all microbial extracts which can be spread on the insect which eventually kills the insect also many marigolds are believed to be good companion plants when you grow marigolds it prevents pest infestation because it traps all the pests it attracts pests and it traps it and the toxins in the marigold plants which are there kinds of nematodes so that's how when you grow marigolds with your vegetable garden it will control lot of pests to a great extent then there are diseases like how we fall sick plant fall sick as well and they also have diseases there are fungal diseases and bacterial diseases like in the first picture because of too much of water you will see these chilly seedlings are dying and it has got a rot this a disease is called as damping off then on the leaves you will see burnt appearances with yellow borders so this is bacterial blight on on brinjals and tomatoes you might have seen these uh, uh, rotten patches which is called as formopsis blight is also a disease then you see some spots and some days when you water or when you manure the plant even if you water or manure the plant in some days you see the plant still wilting and drooping so when this is happening it's a sign that your plant has got a fungal disease it has got a fungal root so these to prevent these diseases there are again some microbial uh, microbials available one is trichoderma which is available as nisr you can mix it in water or mix it in compost and put it in the soil only so this will control all sorts of uh, soil borne diseases and root rot and for foliar borne diseases on for the leaf spots on leaves or if the fruit is rotting or if you see custard apple turning black sarsap turning black for that you can spray sparsha so on the fruits and on the leaves you can spray dilute in water and spray it on the leaves and there is something called as panchgravya 
which is made up of cow dung, cow urine, curd, ghee, uh, bananas, yeast, and a lot of stuff, urine, and uh, it is a plant growth booster. It contains different sorts of micro microorganisms and the micro nutrient nutrients which help in plant growth. So when you can add, you can add panchgavya, you can add chewing root for your plants by diluting in the water, and this will provide a good growth and boost plants immunity. So it's like a tonic for the plants which you can use for a better growth. So I have a final quiz now. You can, I want some other persons to answer it, okay? Except uh, Keisha, Trisha and Kenneth, somebody can answer it. So guess the beneficial insects on the screen. So there are some uh, four very common beneficial insects. You have to guess them. You have to guess all four, not just one. Number one is honeybee. Number one is honeybee. Number two is beetles. Number two is beetles. Number three is dragonfly. Number three is dragonfly. There's a, there's a girl uh, by Sean Palla who's answering and also Larika. The first one, Larika Norona has answered it correctly. The first one will be, the second one is ladybug beetle. The middle one is dragonfly and the fourth one is praying mantis. Now there are something called as insect pests which damages the crop, which damages your plants. And then, uh, then there are some good insects in the nature as well. So honeybees helps in pollination. They help in, when, when there's good pollination, you get good, good food set. Also, they provide honey. So honeybees are beneficial insects. Then there are ladybugs. Ladybugs are also beneficial insects. Like I explained earlier, there are some tiny insects which suck the cell sap and transmit viral diseases. So any insect which transmit viral diseases in a very tiny, these ladybugs eat those insects. So ladybugs predate on tiny insects which damages the crop. So thereby they are beneficial to in agriculture, they're beneficial in gardening. Then there, there are dragonflies. So mostly in monsoon, you'll see mosquitoes breeding. And soon after monsoon, in September to November, you'll see dragonflies. So guess what? Dragonflies feed on larvae of mosquitoes and other insects which breed in water and on the plants. So dragonflies are eventually helpful in nature and in garden by controlling the mosquitoes and other uh, uh, garden pests. Also in the fourth picture, you can see praying mantis holding a locust. The locusts and grasshoppers are very damaging insect pests. They feed on uh, leaves and damage farmers' crop to a great extent. So when you have praying mantis in your garden, it predates on these locusts, grasshoppers, and leaf hoppers and controls all these uh, hop hopping insects to a great extent. So these are some beneficial insects which are there in the nature. So what you do as agriculture, sorry, as commerce students, what benefits you have as commerce students in agriculture? So we know farmers grow food, their crop, when they, whenever they grow food, their crop is entirely dependent on the profit they get. So it is a, it's kind of a living for them. So as an ag, a commerce graduate, you can go for agribusiness marketing operator. So if you go into agribusiness, agribusiness, now there are different agribusinesses coming up. There are farm producers. First, very live plants are sold online from one place to another. From Delhi to Goa, live plants are being sold from Bangalore to Goa, live plants. This was never happening some years ago, but now you see, because of e-commerce, anything is possible. There is quick delivery, and you can sell seeds, seniors, and different stuff online. Then you can be a farm appraiser for a farmer, which helps in funding and costing and creating a budget for the farmer. So you can be a farmer. Then there are a lot of agriculture opportunities in banking sector. 
So when you, as a commerce student, you will have more details, more knowledge about banking sector. You can just find out about what opportunities you have in agriculture sector because farmers get constant loans for varying some schemes or buying some machinery, or buying some seeds and fertilizers. So this is very uh, common and you can take an opportunity by going into a banking sector. Also, retail industries are coming up. Every produce that you see, the biscuits, the cakes, and other food, the raw material is agriculture. The flour we use for biscuits or uh, the eggs from the poultry, everything is from the uh, uh, agriculture or everything is from it's all food. So you as a farmer student have opportunities in retail industries as well. You can also start agri-businesses. Need not be, you need not be an agriculture graduate to start an agri-business. There are many MBA students, MCOM and uh, BCOM students in India. You can just scroll on Google. You can just type MCOM students who have, who have, who have agri-business who are agri pioneers You get their stories and you, it's quite inspiring. Then there, there is food production industries. Food will never go out of in vain. You will need food forever. So food production industries are the top industries. You can see, you can try uh, your luck in these uh, sectors as well. And you can be an economist for farm businesses. So every farmer requires economics actually. There are farmers who are naive and mostly suffer loss. So when you help, you can start your own consultation firm to help farmers to set up a budget, to create a budget to know their cost and profit losses. And that's how you can be an economist or a consultant for the farmers. So these are some scope. And I've added some uh, inspiring Goan youth who are into agriculture and commerce. So they are agriculture graduates basically, but now as agri students, you might have heard about the um, entrepreneurs, but once uh, you do something in agriculture on your own commercially, then you are called as agri -pruners. The first one is Shweta Gankar from Sangyan. She is the first uh, woman who is a story taker in Goa. So she's from Sangyan. She knows to climb a coconut tree. So you can see she's not climbing just manually. Now technology has come up so well and there are some machines to climb coconut tree. So you can see she's using a coconut tree and tapping toddy. So this, she's breaking all the stereotypes and being a woman, she is doing all this. So it's quite inspiring. Then there's Vandit Naik and Priyanka Naik, uh, also agriculture graduates who have their nurseries at home. There are others also who are not agriculture graduates but are selling plants online. You might have seen on Instagram and Facebook plants at home are being sold online. So you can start your nursery, you can have your nursery if you have space and sell plants to people. So they, they have a nursery at home, they prepare one compost, they prepare panchgavya and they do a lot of other stuff. And quite inspiring for the youth to see young people taking such businesses ahead. Then there's Elijah Disoza and Akshay Alunza from Anjuna and Akshay Sawan from Valpoi. Now Elijah has a poultry at home. He has started by from getting few chickens from ICAR and then he's raiding the chicken and selling eggs. Also, he has a, book, a business in a library, moving library, which, which wherein he sells and he rents books to people by delivering it to them by on a so Elijah is one of the inspiration and Akshay Samant is a young farmer from Varpoy. So he grows a lot of vegetables and ready at home and the produce he gets, he sells to the Goa Bagheda units and the market. And that's how he earns his living. So you see agriculture and commerce goes hand in hand. Then in the middle, there's Stella Pires from Navalim. She sells all these agricultural inputs and is a marketing and marketing consultant. So these were some of the uh, inspiring youth from Goa. And you can also take inspiration from them. You can just start from one pot and then build. So always start small and then you can build. So this is how we can escape from metaverse. This kind of reality is, will be really boost for your health and uh, also, you know, the food that you grow will be organic, will be safe, free from any kind of harmful pesticides. 
and garden and going into field and agriculture is kind of an exercise for your body you don't have to go to a gym or you have to don't have to go to play somewhere else just to give an uh, good movement for your body you can just get into gardening and it's a good exercise for you and when once you grow food by yourself you know it's healthy <clears throat> and fresh so this is how you can escape from metaverse uh, thank you so much now if you have any questions you can type it in the chat box this is open for all or you can turn on your microphones and ask me thank you ma'am for your resourceful content we are glad to have received several questions from our participants due to time constraints we are putting forward the selected ones the first question is how frequently to use a uh, panchagavya on plants now panchagavya can be used once in 15 days so after 15 days you can spray it again or you can put it in the soil and dilution ratio is 50 ml in 1 liter of water and then you can put it for your plants so in a month you can use it twice if there are any fruit falls of flower drops you can use it once a week so that will be four times in a month only if there is uh, flower drops and fruit falls otherwise it should be used twice in a month that is after a gap of 15 days any more questions Yeah, Harshita, we were not able to hear you. Repeat the question now again. Second question. Off. Harshita, your microphone is off. I guess. Sorry, ma'am. Which vegetable do you suggest for a uh, beginners? For beginners, you can grow leafy vegetables like tamri baji. You can grow. It is red emerald in English. You can grow fenugreek, which is methi. You can you have methi seeds at home. You can try chilies, dry chilies which are there. You can just remove the seeds and sow it in the pot. Raise the seedlings, and there are there is dovi baji also and palak. So these are quick growing vegetables, ideal for beginners to start with. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for your elegant answer. We are uh, and thank you for the participants putting forward their questions. I now Thank request. Yeah. I now request Miss C from S Y B B A to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, Harshita. It's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the entire B B A Financial Service Department. Extend hearty get gratitude to the honourable resource person. for the session i am confident that the participant would have certainly benefited from the session thank you ma'am for your valuable time and invaluable glimpses of expertise i appreciate the overwhelming participation and wholeheartedly thank all the participants for their active participation in this session i wish to express my gratitude to the management of our college and professor dr prita malya principal of our college for being our constant source of inspiration encouragement and support i must mention our deep sense of appreciation to miss mavia and pradnya lab instructor and for technical expertise and assistance i would like to thank harshita for comparing the session and ashwini ma'am for introducing the speaker i would also like to thank ma'am snehal and ma'am ashwini for their valuable coordination towards the session last but not the least i would like to thank shami ma'am iqsc coordinator for always guiding and motivating us thank you all once again feedback uh, form link is sent in the chat box participation may feel the same thank you sia the feedback form link has been provided in the chat box in youtube and google meet thank you one and all Yeah, thanks, Lisa. Thank you. I think the community and the management of the commerce and economics was lovely interaction.
participants through the chat. Also, I hope you all found my uh, webinar quite helpful and I hope that you start gardening soon. Wishing you good luck for your careers too. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.